most people in life are looking at how do I make a life worth living in return with having. I always encourage people, if they're new to listening or if they're old to listening, that it's important for them to focus 100% on their personal and professional business. What is your life looking like today? Are you finding yourself in life balance today? Have you discovered the eight areas of infinite life balance and are you pursuing those things today? The number one most important part of life balance, of course, is not only the reality of spirituality and faith, the practice that keeps you straight-laced, the ability to know what is right from wrong, and the ability to catch yourself when you are wrong. In life, we have moments of time to admit when we're wrong all the time. We have moments of time to say, I'm sorry for what I've done, and claim full-heartedly, wholeheartedly, the errors that we've committed. Holding ourselves accountable before the Lord is easy, usually because we often hear that phrase that Jesus Christ died for our sins, or whatever your belief system might say, and therefore you are forgiven. But a lot of people today like to use that as an easy out for continuing to do things that are really, well, down and out. You see, if you want your life to change, you have to decide today, my life is going to change because tomorrow is gone. The future is still in my hands and I can make a change today that could change my whole life and its cycle into a different loop. You see, we get in these tracks sometime, like a railroad train, and we get ourselves chugging down a track that may not be right for our life. And it's so not right for our life that we're starting to observe those not rights for our life in how people react to us, how people listen to us, and how people think about our children's behavior around us. You know, it's easy to spout off that your kids like the good stuff, but it's another thing entirely for them to know what the good stuff in life is. The most important things in life are usually, to most people, after their faith, family, fitness, finances, and some sort of fun. Philanthropy is often left to the sidelines, and friendships can be, well, paltry, if not none. But in life we have to know what infinite life balance could become. In order to focus on our life, we have to be willing to put down some ideas on a private journal, on a, well, what we used to call a dream board, where you're literally putting a bulletin board together, sort of like a scrapbook in a way, in which you're saying, Lord, these are the things I want to have come my way. I'd like to have a new quality car come in my direction. I'd like to know how to get one that doesn't cost me an arm or leg. I'd like to find one that has economic oriented gas mileage and openly I need to be able to haul things and carry things so that I can live my life in the fullest way that you expect of me whether I'm doing something for me or whether I'm doing something paltry in philanthropy the reality is Meals on Wheels is an organization that we should always think about handling with people who are suffering in poverty suffering in elderliness and suffering in well loneliness I'm always amazed at how these churches want to be food banks but oftentimes They don't use their food handlers to drive food to those who are the least of these. There are plenty of people in the streets that are obviously in need of canned goods. You can bring them fresh food for the day, but you cannot bring fresh food to them that they'll keep for several days due to the natural elements of the heat. Most people like me who are traveling always prefer to have a cooler, but when I was on campus, some monstrous bastard police officer or their friends decided to ruin wheels of a brand new cooler that a nice church lady did for me and she replaced my other one for me because someone out at the mall decided to ruin them all. You see, in life we have to decide are we a monster in front of Jesus Christ or are we magnificent in front of the Lord's Most High? You see, when we're magnificent we live within the boundaries of our business. We also live within the financial capabilities that are with us And we continue to think about how do I set a little cash away for my elderly days. When we don't have cash at hand, when our whole life is turned upside down with cybercrime, identity theft, and fraud, where people just think it's such a fun time to play on your computer. And like in my case this last week, they literally timed me out or turned off almost every application that I was using to produce a new life for me. And I sit there and I wonder what kind of motherfucking monster thinks they're going to be God in my life. And do it from the sidelines, from the shadows of the world because it's just too hard for them to stand in front of me and say, I did this to you. I'm so proud of what I'm doing to you. 
and you just want to look at them and go, who the fuck are you? I don't know who the fuck you are. Where the fuck do you get off playing in my life as if I'm some little porn star for you or I'm some little toy for you? And I'm going to be as foul as I need to be because that is exactly what you're producing in front of the Lord Most High's house. That you're saying, I am God over you. Repent and be glad in it. Or something to that effect. And I just look at these people and go, what the fuck is wrong with you? Get a life. Buy one. Earn one. But certainly don't steal one. You are stealing your life away. You are taking away the benefits that the Lord had planned for you today. When you harm another human being's life, when you complain to police about shit you don't understand, when you piss on people in your job, which isn't your job function or your duties at hand, you're pissing all over your manager, you're destroying your relationship with your divisional manager, and you might just piss off your president enough that he'll just can your little ass into the ground because you thought that you were not responsible for your behavior both on the job and off the job with the people you met while you were on the job. This is the mistake in the risk management that people take and the way that companies don't train their employees. That if they meet someone through a business venture, meaning they meet someone through their business and they pursue them in their private time in some way, it better be on the level. Either it's a true love interest, which does happen in the world. That's how we meet people. That's how we find the right girl. But at the same time, if you're doing something to monkey someone's life, if you're doing someone to cause someone strife, if you're doing something to humiliate someone, if you're doing something to behave inappropriately with someone, if you're doing something sexually completely out of control, you are literally putting your life on the line to be sued into the ground by your corporation who is paying you to do very little in your time, not all, who is paying you to perform a job function. And your performance on that job is what they're looking at every day. Your performance is what they look at at the end of a year, at the annual review, to allow you to stay. And here's what we know about most people is you have to have a job in order to get another job. And you must leave that job within two weeks notice, which is the typical standard of any industry still even today that says I have gone on to a much more marvelous job than this and the most polite way you can think about doing the risk and I want to thank you for my employment but I'll be leaving in two weeks and you're giving that company two weeks notice to have a half a chance to replace you but we what we know is that when we have attrition that it costs almost 35 percent of that annual salary or that per diem if you will for the year to replace someone who's pretty decent in their job. You see, if you don't know that, it's because you've never sat in a human resources meeting in a corporation that employed 200 to 400 people. If you don't know that, it's because you're not thinking about how your job career is based on your first job of where you choose to launch your career. And while you can run off to a hemp garden and be a little planter of pot, that might not launch you into the type of lifestyle, the type of people, the type of social network, the type of industry, the type of benefits, the type of income that you're really looking for for the rest of your life. Whereas if you flip yourself around and look at it a little differently and you go into a pharmaceutical company that's world renowned, that might change your whole motherfucking life because you could work there year after year ranking up and banking up benefits like my late father almost did with his own General Electric salary, but openly and now I'm telling too much out of turn. That was back in the day when people still had silver bullets. And if you don't know what that is, then you're too young to be listening to me anyway. You see, in life we have to look at what am I going to retire on? How am I going to make my living when I'm too tired to do much? Where am I going to live? Am I going to be an independent living? Am I going to be in a small apartment making it barely getting by? Am I going to be working at a french fry establishment? How am I going to be providing my, for my family, whoever is left for me? Are my children going to contribute to me? Have I established in them some sort of obligatory requirement that they have to look after me in my old age? Have I produced in them the love that is required for them to not bicker and fight and create difficulties and smite in a family of the day when they've already gone on to their own spouses, their own children, their own lives, and yet they want to continue to piss on one or two family members that just might not survive it? Now, when we talk about these things, we're, of course, talking about God's plan for people, aren't we? I mean, after all, it takes other people to put those plans in place. Not entirely. 
I have seen incredible marvelousness and magnificence and magic of Jesus Christ or what most people call God and associate Jesus as if Jesus is God and we get taught this whole thing where Jesus is really God and God is really Jesus and that isn't exactly truthful in a pagan world that says no there's a mother and father God and there's a Jesus Christ that came as a son of them to save man from their sins but it doesn't allow us the out of having the responsibility of choosing our own reputation in the world and if you're a magnificent bastard by age 20 then you'll probably be a shitbag by the time you're age 30 and God knows what will happen to you by the day you're 40 you probably have spent a lot of time in and out of jail because you just haven't figured out the rules of life the rules of life are pretty straightforward. You learn to serve. And if you can't learn to serve others, then you haven't learned to serve yourself. Because in the world, we don't get by without having the right kind of people around us to thrive. And if you don't like the kind of people that you're around, then you start to think about, well, how do I change my job so I can change my income, so I can change my zip code, or I can change my apartment, or I can change the hotel I'm staying in, or I can just simply change for the better in my life so that when I'm old and gray I will not be literally killing myself uh, standing on my feet all day being all upset about the fact that I lost my husband or I didn't produce a new one or something like that today